What's up, you guys? Um, so today I am going to attempt to reshoot a video that I had already shot, but accidentally deleted. But I feel like it's a very important video for me to share with you guys because I'm gonna be showing you how... Oh my God, I swear to God, my neighbors are having too much fun. Y'all heard that, right? <laughs> but let's try that again. I'm gonna be showing you guys how I um, extract hair from a donor wig, which is this wig, to add to um, an existing wig. So I'm just, before I actually get into all of that, let me show you guys what I need, or what you're gonna need if you want to do this to your own wig. You're gonna need some hairspray, just cheap old regular regular hairspray from wherever. You're gonna need a whole bunch of duckbill clips. Move those to the side. You're gonna need your um, whipping or ventilating needle. The only, the difference mainly between my ventilating needles and my whipping needle is my whipping needle has a much longer needle and my ventilating needle is actually pretty short. Um, I don't know if you can see those, but um, this is my whipping needle and this is my ventilating needle. And this allows me more control over the strands of hair where this allows me to like fish the needle through a bunch of different obstacles without it getting stuck. So that's the key difference. Um, you're gonna need some invisible thread or nylon thread. Um, you're gonna need nail scissors, just like really small scissors. Or if you have a de-threader, you could use a de-threader. But this is what I have on hand, so I'm gonna use that. And you're gonna need a tail comb. You're also gonna need a canvas head, of course, to work on. Um, and honestly, I will say, if you don't already have one of these heads and you are a wig maker or you're someone that enjoys working with wigs, get you a canvas head because foam heads are literally for display purposes only. They're not actually intended to work on because they're not even the right size. So um, yeah, it's always important to get the right tools to get the best results. So, is it someone's birthday? I swear to God, it's a lot outside. Um, you guys are gonna have to bear with my neighbors. They're having a great time. So, I've already added a whole, pretty much half of this. Wait, let me show you what I mean. So, let me put her here and take her sister. So this wig, I've already literally taken like 50% of the hair out to add to this wig. So that tells you exactly how thin this wig was before and how much hair I had to add to it for it to look this full. But just adding all that hair gave it so much volume and like body that, you know, it makes perfect sense to buy two, if you can buy two of the exact same wigs and harvest hair out of the one wig and put it in the other wig, that's great. But also sometimes the wigs are quite pricey. So I always say get one lace front wig and one hard front wig and take hair out of, if you can get them of course in this exact same color. Then you just take hair out of the hard front wig to put into the lace front wig. And that keeps the cost quite low, but it gives you the best possible result because you know, these companies, these hair companies, sometimes they will give you the best lace and like the best job with like the knotting and the knots and then give you like four strands of hair at the back. And it's just like, wait, what? So you have to make do with what you get, you know? Anyway, so let me just set up real quick and then show you guys how I got into it. So give me a second. Okay, so... Oh my goodness, this wig bag is looking hectic. All right, so y'all can see that, right? Mm -hmm. So the first step that you're gonna do, and obviously when you're working with your wigs, you won't have this bald already. You would be starting right here at the nape, but I've already taken hair out. So I'm just gonna show you how to safely take hair out of your wig without. I mean, I did make a couple of mistakes because I did this at night and I did get a couple of holes in the lace. I mean, in the net, so I'm gonna have to go and repair those. But it's okay because it's not right, but it's okay. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is you're gonna section off and isolate 
the hair that you want to, to take out of your wig. So this is the hair that I want out. And you want to pull it down like that. And then you want to grab your hairspray and give it a very light mist. And what that'll do is it'll keep all the fuzzy bits at bay because I hate when I start doing this and I end up cutting so much hair because it just happens to be in the way. So always make sure that you kind of give your hair a little bit of texture. And that way when you're working with it, it doesn't fly around. Like that. And then you're just gonna grab your little duckbill clips and you're gonna grab all the hair that you're not um, pulling out and just sort of section it off like that so that this is free to move around without getting tangled with this section. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna... Now with this, you have to be very careful. Don't make the same mistakes I did and make a bunch of holes in your wig cap because now I have to go back and fix them. But you wanna cut along where the where you see the threads sort of connect the weft to the cap and you want to cut just those threads and nothing else. But the great thing about these wefts is once you cut one, like the right thread off successfully, the whole thing kind of unravels very easily. But it's just about getting that initial cut right. See, once you let that part go, it just literally comes off so easy. I'm just gonna keep going until I'm happy with. You wanna keep going actually until you're done on the other side. But because I've already done this wig and it doesn't actually need all that much more volume, and this is literally just to show you guys my method. Oh, well, would you look at that? Though it tracks both for its own self. I'm only gonna use that little piece to show you guys. But if you were doing this from scratch, you would do the whole bit all the way to the other side and you would use the whole, in fact, I'm gonna actually take this piece out too because in another video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to add a customized hairline onto an existing wig. Because again, sometimes you buy a wig and the way that they've done the hairline is just not flattering or it doesn't cover um the shape of your hairline all the way you know because obviously these are all mass produced wigs so they all look exactly the same and if you have like a very dramatic widow's peak or like you have cow's licks or just like a different sort of shaped hairline these wigs might not necessarily always sit right on your forehead which means you then have to go in and customize your hairline so in a whole different video, which I will probably not link anywhere because I always say I'm gonna do that, but I end up not. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And so I'm on this side. I'm gonna spray this again because it's getting quite fuzzy. It's important to always remember to do things too because I find with wigs, what happens a lot, and I see this a lot with people that I train to is they'll start the right way and they'll do things the right way and then they'll get so absorbed in what they're doing that they work themselves into a corner by forgetting all the steps that I show them. Like, you always wanna remember, take a step back and look at what is it, like if you're finding that things are getting tangled like I am now, that's probably because I'm not using enough clips to hold all this hair out, out the way. So you take a little step back and you assess what's actually getting in the way of you being able to do what you need to do and you correct it and then you move forward because there is absolutely no reason to just be struggling wigs should be fun not stressful and also this wig that i'm pulling hair out of the way that it's sewn is just so absolutely crazy like some of the tracks are literally just going the opposite way of where they should be going. But girl, that's what happens when you, you know, <laughs> I'm not even gonna come for anyone today. I'm not in the mood to read anybody, but sometimes, you know, 
these factories, the way that they make their wigs is wild. Okay, so that's done. I've taken all that hair out and that's all I'm gonna need for the purpose of this video. And as you can tell, if you look at the part that I didn't completely shred, um, there's no damage to that part. Like all those tracks came out really successfully and there's literally no damage. I may have to go back and sew these little wig stays back down, but other than that, this wig is fabulous. So I'm just gonna set that aside. And then I'm gonna do a quick reset and show you guys what to do next. Okay, so I've gone in and I've sectioned off the part that I'm gonna be working on. I've put that in a really tight sort of bun up here so that it pulls this section and exposes the weft. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, again, spray every that little section with some hairspray. Like, I swear to God, it might seem like the hairspray is just extra, but girl, it does, it does the job, for real. <laughs> so, you want, you could use got to be for this, for the hairspray, but it's just, I find that that's too strong and it's kind of hard to like get it. You have to then wash the wig and I'm not trying to go through all of that. So just use like any sort of like light hot hairspray. And you'll see how if I just rub that that way, that hair is not going anywhere. It's now gonna just stay put where it's been sprayed. So now when I'm working, I have a clean, I have clean access to this little track without little fuzzy bits getting in my way. So now you're gonna take your little track, right? And you're gonna... Today is such a noisy day, my God. I picked the wrongest day to do this video. Anyway, it's Memorial Day weekend and everyone is having a good time, so whatever. Um, what am I looking for? My little, that's what I forgot to show you guys. My bad. You're also going to need some applique pins. And these are just really tiny little pins like that that are really great for holding your tracks down while you work. So you wanna pin and follow the sort of shape and contours of the existing track that's underneath. So that when you release these pins, those tracks are kind of going the same way. They're following the same sort of direction like that and pull out any bits that might be stuck in there okay so once you have that done you're then gonna grab your little nylon thread and you're gonna double it up this is really hard to see on camera, so I'm just gonna try and explain as best as I can. But you're gonna make sh sure that the both pieces are the same length. So loop it over, fold it, and make sure that both pieces are the same length. And then you're gonna take your needle and feed it underneath the wig cap, underneath the weft, and pull it through. And then you're gonna hook the thread and pull that to the other side and make a double knot and then pull it through. And that's just gonna secure it and keep it flat. And now all you're gonna do is repeat that process. Feed the thread under and over to the other side. Tie it. This time you're just gonna tie it one time. You're gonna loop it and tie it once, not twice. And again, feed it on, catch it, pull it under and over, loop it, tie it. And this is why it's important too for this needle to be quite long. Like I do sometimes use this very same needle for ventilating, but I pretty much reserve this needle for whipping and for doing this type of thing because imagine if this needle was really short, I wouldn't be able to get underneath very far before I would run out of slack. So you want this to be quite long. And also, I know that some wig makers don't tie their thread off every time they loop it around the, the weft. 
And you can do it like that, but the only problem is if this thread were to break and you didn't have a knot at every stitch, it would, the whole thing would literally just unravel and come out and you would have to repair this wig pretty much immediately. But because every little stitch is reinforced in my stitches, if something were to break, it probably would not affect the track at all. It probably wouldn't even affect any, it would just stay there. Like that little small section would come undone, but it would stay in place, you know? So even though it does add like a couple of minutes to your overall work time, it's worth it to just invest this labor now so you don't have to do any repairs later. Anyway, I'm gonna let you guys keep watching and I'm gonna be quiet. Okay, so I've done the entire track all the way to the end. And as you can tell, like that was in real time. That was not um, sped up or anything. It really does not take that long. Like if you were doing this with a normal needle and thread, you'd probably have spent it pretty much the same amount of time doing this. But the only difference is when you do it this way, you get such a perfect stitch. Like that is the track that I just sewed in and it's perfectly fused to the track underneath it. Like they're literally basically the same track now. 
and you would not get that same result had you used a needle and thread. Like you would probably get a pretty decent result, but this is just so seamless and perfect that I would much rather do it this way. And then once you get to the end of your stitch, your row or whatever you want to call it, you want to do a double. So you want to pull your thread through, under and over, and you want to tie it off once, tie it off twice, and maybe even a third time because why not? <laughs> and then you want to press it down and really sort of tug at it and make sure that it's nice and tight. And then what I do just to make it extra secure is I then just tie that off like this, the two threads that I have here. I tie them off and that just makes it super secure so that God forbid anything did happen, that little stitch would never come out. Because remember, these wigs are still gonna get teased, they're gonna get styled, they're gonna get washed, so much is gonna happen to them that you wanna always make sure that your, your stitches are just so, so, so tight and like super secure. So now you can go in and pull out all your little pins and I'm gonna show you guys just what I mean. Like, see how you can pull that up? Like this, the track isn't super like hard and flat and like you can pull it up, you can do whatever. Like these two, these are two tracks that have now been sort of combined into one seamless track. So yeah, that's pretty much how I did that. And obviously you would then continue doing that on and on all over your wig until you're happy with the volume. But I hope that that made sense. And I hope that it helped you guys somewhat with your wig journeys. Um, yeah, if you liked that video, remember to share it with your friends and you know, do the good things. Like it, share it, do what you need to do. Thank you so much for watching.